We've had some pretty big games in FM22 Mercenary, including German Cup finals and Istanbul derbies. But today might just be the biggest as Lazio take on Roma. Let's dive straight in by looking at the league table and we've made a reasonably solid start to life in Serie A. Certainly far better than we did when we were last here managing Sampdoria. We've actually played a couple of the big teams and done very well it's against some of the lesser lights in Serie A that we've slipped up a little needlessly. Ticking along in the background, we've also got a Champions League campaign as well. We'll bring you up to date with the full form in a moment. But look at this league table. Internazionale are top of it with 23 points. Juve, the old lady of Italian football, are just one point further back. And then another point behind you will find us. Six wins, three draws, an unbeaten first nine games to the season. We're doing pretty well so far. And so to that form, when we will start in the Champions League, where we've made a fairly low-key start, we were drawn in one heck of a group, by the way. Manchester United are in there. That's the second season running. We've been playing the might from Manchester in the Champions League, but along with them, we were drawn against Spanish club Real Betis and German side Bayer Leverkusen. So we were in action against Peña and co. All of our old players when we drew the Champions League groups. And it was to the Bay Arena that we travelled to on match day one. We were not given the warmest of welcomes by the home fans, and it was a bit of a dull game. We heavily rotated the squad, bringing out all 11 of the players that had started the previous Serie A game, and instead we brought in a lot of our bench warmers because we were prioritising the league over the Champions League. I thought we'd probably get heavily beaten making all those changes. Leverkusen thought they'd stolen it through Peña on 81 minutes. And in stoppage time, as we bought a couple of our star names off the bench, we had the chance to take the lead ourselves and we thought we might have snatched all three points at the death. The dashery was judged to have been offside and the game finished nil-nil. For match day two, we welcomed Manchester United to the Olympico and it was a bruising encounter from our point of view as they scored after just three minutes. Before half an hour had been played, Manchester United had gone two and then three goals up. Dashery managed to pull a goal back for us halfway through the second half to make it 3-1. But just six minutes later, Manchester United restored their three-goal lead to run out 4-1 victors. Against Betis, we played a slightly stronger lineup. We took the lead on 60 minutes through a set piece, but Betis equalised three minutes later. And within five minutes of going ahead, we found ourselves 2-1 down. In fact, all of the goals in this game came within a 12-minute spell as Vinya fired home an equaliser late on. And so to that unbeaten start in Serie A, where you saw us beating Brescia on the opening weekend of the season, we'll check out match day two, where we travel to Genoa to take on our old club Sampdoria, another set of supporters that will have been none too welcoming of us but we ran out 6-1 victors in this game. We were 3-0 up and had even missed a penalty before half an hour had even been played. And in the second half, we continued our dominance as we scored a fourth, a fifth, and Rodriguez netted a sixth. But after the encounter with Sampdoria came a couple of real tests. First up were Juventus at the Olympico, where we took the lead on 18 minutes through Dakari. And despite the quality of our opponents, this was a game where we were utterly dominant. And in the second half, Pembele fed Musella to put us 2-0 up. The Juve result gave us confidence as we headed to the San Siro to take on Milan. Again, we were dominant, but this time we had to come from behind. After Milan had taken the lead, our holding midfielder Resco managed to fire us back level before Gaia crossed and that man Musella put us two on in front. We restricted Milan to relatively few chances and on 69 minutes, Strawberry Daiquiri put the game beyond doubt. The results against Juve and Milan had me dreaming of a Serie A Scudetto challenge, but there's nothing like football manager to bring you back down to earth. In the next game, we took on Fiorentina, who were towards the top of the table. We were actually lucky to escape this game with a nil-nil draw. You'll see Fiorentina had 14 shots, seven of them on target, and they had a higher XG than ourselves. So to escape from this game with a point was actually pretty pleasing. But against Hasuolo, it was a different matter. It was the same result, but a different performance. We were dominant in this game. We really should have won, but we were not aided as we were pressing for that goal to have Rodriguez sent off on 59 minutes. We still continue to dominate the match, even with 10 men. We just couldn't find the breakthrough. However, against Atalanta, our players bought their shooting boots as we managed to cap off a 3-1 win 
Alexi scored the opener, and the same player scored our third as some strong play down the right left him free in the box to fire home. Next up were Pisa, and this was another disappointing draw. Our opponents offered almost nothing but scored a blockbuster goal after 64 minutes. We should have been two, possibly three goals up before Pisa scored. Instead, we left it until the 84th minute to find an equaliser through Kevin. And in our last match, we took on Verona. Although we ran out 3-1 winners, it leaves us with some concerns about our forward players. Despite six wins and three draws in our opening nine league games, I do have concerns about the system, and it comes with our ability to score goals, where we have a little bit of a misfiring front three. Ricardo Masella has been playing as a right winger for us. He could go and play up front. So far, he's hardly rattling in the assists or the goals. And for an elite winger, we'd like a little more from him. Over on the left is the man that misses the majority of our chances. He may be our top scorer with four goals this season, three of them coming in Serie A. But this pacey goal scorer has been anything but. His composure of 17 means that I thought he would take far more chances coming in as a left-sided player. But that has not been the case. So I've switched his role from being an inside forward to being an inverted winger. And I've also switched Marcella from being a winger on support to a winger on attack to see whether this might just change the patterns of our play and get us more goals. It also means I've made a change to the role that Alexi is going to be playing in the system as well. This is another player who I was fairly confident would be scoring more goals than he has. Three for him in nine games. He's missed a lot of one-on-one -on -one chances as well. So I'm asking him to be slightly more withdrawn now playing as a pressing forward rather than an advanced forward and because the two supporting players behind him are both on an attack duty I'm asking him to be on a support duty. I've also changed the pattern of our midfield a little as well where we've gone from playing a box-to-box -box midfielder to a roaming playmaker alongside Rodriguez who will be the central midfielder on attack alongside the two fullbacks that will both be looking to get further up the field I'm hoping we might start to create some different chances, maybe some higher percentage chances. We've been taking too many long shots, so work ball in the box is on, and too many aimless crosses has meant that I've changed that to just put low crosses into the box to try and create some tap-ins and some cutbacks for our players to run onto. Hopefully, these changes will make a difference because there's no bigger game for Lazio fans than today's encounter against the old foes of Roma. Both Roman clubs have made a strong start to the season and Tammy Abraham leads the scoring charts after more than a decade of banging in goals in the capital. Through their league positions last season, both clubs qualified for the Champions League and Roma have experience in the dugout in the shape of Roger Schmidt, who's formerly led both Leverkusen and the German national team. In fact, experience runs throughout this squad with players such as Diogo Jota, Tosin Adarabayo, Roger Ibanez, and of course, that danger man who even at the age of 35 still has great pace and aerial prowess. A win in the derby would be huge for either club as Roma take on Lazio. So let's see whether these changes make any difference to our luck in front of goal. Our build-up play has been good, we've looked comfortable, composed and dominant in many of our games including the ones against Juventus and Milan and even in the Champions League against Betis we look the stronger side but we've struggled to take our chances. Maybe the quality of chances we've been creating has not been good enough. Let's see whether we can put that to rights in the derby today. We're in early and the man, Strawberry Dakery, who I said has missed far too many chances as an inside forward. Well, now he's been switched. He's playing as an inverted winger and he has dashed into the box and Dakery comes up good as Pembele, a player who I should have shown you, by the way. His average rating is an 8.0, and I think that could be his sixth or even his seventh assist of the season. What a start to the derby that will have been, but Roma are looking to pull back to level terms straight away. We've played the ball back to our keeper, and Alexi is on the halfway line looking to launch a counter. We've played it left to Gaia now, a 37-year-old left-back who still is full of running. And Alexi, the more withdrawn striker, has helped feed Dakery again. This is more like what he has been doing. Composure's good, but when he's in those chances, he's not taking them. 
The keeper sends it behind for a corner and Livakovic comes and claims it comfortably. We've made a pretty strong start to this game, but with this side, I always feel like we need a second, potentially a third goal, as we can be a little bit open at the back at times, especially on an attacking mentality, which we may well drop as we look to manage the game later on if we're still in the lead. Let's see whether we can score a second goal and make this a real day to remember for the Lazio fans. Musella now on an attack duty, comes forward, Alexis in. Another player who has not been good in front of goal, but less than 10 minutes into the Rome derby, we are 2-0 ahead. And this is looking like a momentous day in our time in charge of Lazio, as Masella, rather than takes on his man, just plays a drifted ball through. And we had a brace of players that could have run in through on goal. Alexi dodges past the keeper and slots it home. If the referee just wanted to end the game now, I would not complain, but we are coming forward again. Strawberry Daiquiri goes inside and then out, and Alexi, I'm looking for an offside flag. They are going to VAR review it. Surely we have not gone 3-0 up within the first quarter of the game against our greatest rivals in Italian football. We have, you know, there were no offside. Strawberry Daiquiri is having his best game for the club. He goes in, then jinx out, and then still plays an intelligent ball through. And the much maligned Alexi slots his second goal of the game home. I'm not sure whether Roma may feel a little aggrieved. We've had six shots. Five of them have been on target. And we've been 3-0 up. We did say we wanted to try and create better chances during games. And maybe we have, because we're out of five shots that we've had, three of them have found the back of the net. And on half an hour, we are looking comfortable against our great foes. However, there's that ball over the top. And Roma race through and they have pulled one back. Giancarlo Ramos goes past our own keeper. The net was gaping once he'd moved outside. And 3-0 becomes 3-1 in an instant. And another goal back for Roma before the break. And, well, we are looking nervy rather than comfortable. Let's see if we can restore that three-goal lead through this highlight. Pembele plays the ball to Marcella. Now he's into the box. And Rodriguez, and we have 3-1, is now 4-1. And he hit that one like he meant it. Rodriguez comes forward as the central midfielder on attack. It was kind of level with about the penalty spot there. And look at the approach play by Pembele. He plays in Marcella. It's a nice little cutback. And Rodriguez from the angle just slashes it across the keeper. We've scored four goals in the derby. We've lost out on a defensive header and Ramos is in again. And he scored a carbon copy to his first goal. That's twice he's been round our keeper and scored from the same angle. But I think the player we're blaming for this is Admiral Lord Nelson, who's missed his header and Ramos has dashed off the back of him. Our goalkeeper doesn't even move. He doesn't even provide a barrier. This is 4-2, six goals in the first half of the derby. If it becomes 4-3 on the cusp of half time, we may have to make some changes for the second half. Nelson's managed to head this one clear, but still Roma are coming at us. They've got a player free over at right back. The cross comes in. We head it clear once more, but Roma are picking up all the loose balls. And it is 4-3. They've got two goals back before the break. They're running to the halfway line thinking that they could equalise before half time. Our defence is just not getting the ball clear with any conviction. And our goalkeeper, he may as well not be there this afternoon. So if you were 1-0 up at half time in the derby, you'd probably be fairly content. But at 4-3 at half time, I do not know what to make of it. I'm tempted to say that I'm far from pleased. Maybe that might be a little bit too aggressive. Our assistant is recommending that we should tell our players to keep working hard. Well, I'm not sure I have a problem with our work rate. It's more the goals that we're leaking. Instead, I think I'm going to point the finger and tell them that I'm not fully happy with our performance out there. Marcella has been demotivated by that, but the rest of the squad are fired up. I've also made a little tactical tweak at half time. Our midfielder Zakarian was not performing well as the roaming playmaker. Instead, I switched him to be an advanced playmaker on support to see whether we can improve his performance. Here comes Strawberry Daiquiri again. Rodriguez was in. He had acres of space and he didn't use it, but the ball has fell to Dennis Resca. Alexi is involved in the build up. 
Strawberry Daiquiri's involved again. Rodriguez could have scored there, but Masella just taps it to Resca, who curls it around the keeper. We've at least got a two-goal lead once more. On 62 minutes, I think it's time to make a change. Shakarian has not improved as advanced playmaker. In fact, his performance has worsened. We could bring on Donny van der Beek, who could play as a like-for-like -like playmaking replacement, but I think instead we're going to try and change the pattern of the game, which has been far too open for my liking. And I think the man we'll bring on is going to be Frank Kessie. And rather than an advanced playmaker, let's see if we can get him involved in winning the ball back for us. We are going to ask him to be a ball-winning midfielder on defend. We might even ask him to hold his position, which he doesn't want to do. He wants to get further forward. But let's see whether we can just ask him to sit in the middle of the park and try and stunt some of these Roma attacks. The match stats are fairly even in terms of shots and shots on target, but our XG is far superior. So maybe our goal of trying to create better chances has come to fruition, but we do need to work on how open we are defensively. We've sent a long ball forward, despite that being against the play it to the centre-back options that we've instructed our goalkeeper to use. But we've won the ball back. And oh, Admiral Lord Nelson has given it away again. He has been dwindling on the ball, robbed of possession. Ramos now scored a hat-trick, I believe. Abraham nods the ball down. What is the Lord Nelson doing here? We are going to have to substitute him off, despite our lack of centre-back options, because he is having a torrid time. Nelson is directly responsible for two of the goals we've conceded, at least. And yet he's still being given a 6.5 average rating, which I cannot believe is accurate. We're going to take him off and he's been booked as well. And we're going to bring on young Marco Orlando, an 18-year-old midfielder. In two seasons, I think he might be Serie A standard. At the moment, I think he'd be better suited in the Primavera than at the top flight of Italian football. But we've got 18 minutes to try and see out. And it's finally poised at 5-4. Is the goal scoring done in this game? Well, maybe not. Roma have got a corner that they send in deep to the far post. Rodriguez manages to nod away. But we've got 13 minutes left in this game and it is looking tense and nervy at 4-1 up. The Lazio fans were already celebrating. But it's Roma that are doing all of the pressing now as they head another chance just over. And I think with eight minutes to go, we might need to put some time wasting on and try and kill the game. We're counting down to the final whistle now. We just want to get through the rest of this game unscathed and take the three points. We're actually only narrowly ahead on the XG now that Roma have come back at us. But we have at least done a good job of killing that game off. I made a couple more tweaks, changing the fullbacks to support duties, even changing the central midfielder on attack down to support as well. And with a little bit of time wasting and a drop of the tempo, we've seen that game out for a memorable victory. That's certainly one of the better games we've had attacking wise, but defensively, we've still got question marks against us. But it all means that we remain two points behind leaders Inter after 10 games have gone. We have some big games coming up over the next month or so as we take on Internazionale and Napoli back to back. What kind of shape will we be in when you visit us next in this final season? of FM22 Mercenary.